condo ownership is great because someone else is taking care of that pool and all the groundskeeping in the entire community. And it's all shared between everyone in the complex, which usually makes it more affordable. But overnight, condo living has just gone up. For the last six years, the perfect storm's been brewing. Quietly, hardly anybody's been noticing to what's really happening. And some people are gonna get completely wiped out. So, it's a tsunami coming, guys. This is a huge issue, and it started in Florida, and now it's rippling out to the rest of the United States and will ultimately affect many homeowners unknowingly. So in this video, I'm gonna reveal and show you exactly what is happening and why this is happening. So you can avoid the pitfalls that are costly. So give me a thumbs up if you're good with that. Now, many of you have told me that your condo HOA fees are increasing. I get it, right? Inflation's affecting everything in our lives. Well, if that was the only thing that was true, then why is it that some condo owners have seen their fees go up only slightly, while others have told me that theirs are doubled and tripled. So tell me, what are your condo association maintenance fees doing? Put it in the comments below. Now, one condo complex in Miami just got a shocking assessment. They're being asked to pay $175,000 each towards their 40-year recertification. What? So why is it that some condo complexes fees are going up by 300%? Well, there's a perfect storm and there's multiple things that are happening all at the same time. So there's a bunch of insurance companies that are completely pulling out of the market and it's a supply and a demand issue. So building costs are going up, condo price increases, the cost to maintain the buildings, the replacement costs keep going up, along with higher insurance costs to cover all of this stuff. And then add in deferred maintenance, the upfits, the lack of reserves to cover all this stuff. You know what that is? Money. Now, real homeowners are telling a completely different story about the true cost to own. Now, many condos in Florida have no reserves. I mean, that's crazy, right? One lady told me that her Florida condo fee went from $734 to $2,270 per month. What happens when owners can't afford to pay anymore? Well, I'm willing to bet that a lot of condo owners in Florida are not prepared for this. Guys, what is really weird is it's not all condos. It's not all complexes. They're not all experiencing the same thing. Some are experiencing some efficient, well-run, very affordable places, while others are alligators and they're getting eaten alive. So I'm going to show you seven simple tips to avoid the alarming condo money traps and knowing which areas and which ones are winners and which ones are losers. This is super important. So in descending order, number seven. Now at the end of 2024, new Florida condo laws will require all condos in the state to have full reserves fully funded for all of their buildings. And if a building has not been prepared to set money aside, owners will be receiving a huge assessment to catch up to that level. So since reserves are no longer optional, these buildings are gonna find some insurance companies that won't be renewing as well. So being located in the right state located in the right area and the right building, it's extremely important. Number six, looks can be deceiving. You know, one condo building can be right next to the other, yet one can have a low fee and the other one right next door can be much higher. So if you're looking to buy a condo, don't just look at the condos for sale that have the low maintenance fees. It's very important. The truth, you need to dive even deeper and you need to actually know what you get for your money. So this is very important because if they're taking care of what really needs to be done or are they letting it go or cutting long-term maintenance or something small that could be taken care of but they're holding off on that repair and it turns out it's a big deal down the road so it can be a problem okay so a small complex or a large complex which one's better okay in this case size does not matter but if you already live in a condo some things that are really important that you need to know like a be involved and go to those condo association meetings B, request the documents on where your money is actually going. C, see who the association is paying for these services and are they padding the bill, is it, is it too high? And D, if the numbers don't add up, contact an accountant. And if they still don't make any sense to you, call an attorney. On the other hand, if you're shopping for a condo, look for the efficiency in that association, the ones that don't blow the money, the ones that are hands-on management, the ones where the HOA is involved and they're not hiring third-party companies to manage, that is what's preferred. But being in the right complex, in the right community can be like heaven, and being in the wrong community with the wrong management, who's not prepared for this storm, 
can bring you down. Number five, insurance policies. They're all renewing at the same time. So why are a bunch of these renewing all at the same time? Because insurance companies usually do not issue renewals during times when there's named storms at sea. The translation of this is they won't issue a policy during hurricane season. So there's a bunch of sticker shock going on right now. Now, as part of the insurance renewal, the insurance companies are looking for what improvements have been made to the property so that it lowers the risk of that complex. Makes sense, right? In high rise buildings, water intrusion is a big deal. For example, things like upgrades to doors and windows, are they hurricane proof? This can lower the insurance costs in a high rise complex because the risk damage is much less. Now, for example, older style sliding glass window may not give the same kind of protection. So which one would sustain less damage in a storm? Okay, well, which one would potentially receive a lower insurance cost? Is any of this information helpful so far? Let me know. Number four, when the roof has not been replaced, some insurance policies are not renewing the roof if it's older than 10 years or 12 years or 15 years. So knowing the age and the different materials, it can make a difference. Number three, knowledge is power. Buyer beware. So if you're buying, you wanna make sure that you're buying into the right complex and getting the best value and choosing the ones that are way above average. Look, you wanna stay away from the ones that have just had some deferred maintenance before it gets even worse. So here's an example. Now I still own condos in multiple complexes. And if you've watched my other videos, you already know that I personally have been investing in real estate for the last 36 years. And I've seen a lot of stuff, but I owned a condo where a chunk of concrete fell out and was in the parking lot. Believe it or not, I went in and I said to the homeowners association, what's up with that? Are you gonna fix that stuff? And he was like, well, yeah, we're getting around to it. But here's the point. Water will come in eventually when you see a piece of concrete this big or even some speckles in the parking lot. You wanna take care of that before it keeps on going down into the building because fix it first, fix it early, less problems and maintenance issues. Number two, this is very important guys, get a copy of the deed covenants, the meeting minutes and the current budget. Why? The meeting minutes, what happened in the last meeting? Are they looking to add some money for some kind of a repair? The budget, do they have a couple dollars set aside each month from each homeowner to replace that roof or to replace that big project? And you just wanna know these things before you get involved. Now, some things are unavoidable, while other things are 100% completely avoidable. In my opinion, the building collapse of Champlain Towers in Florida was one of those things that was avoidable, considering that the board members and the management company had knowledge of structural issues and did nothing about it. So you must have that knowledge, especially if it's an older building. It's not just the age. It's more important to have someone to guide you with that information that you really need before you buy. You don't wanna look at pretty pictures. You, even new condos have issues too. Here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, my real estate team helps clients buy and sell condos every single day, but it's their experience that allows people to know what complexes are average and which ones to stay away from. And they can guide their clients to the best options. But in places like Florida, many of those condos are getting hit even harder compared to other states because a vast majority of those buildings are 30 years or older in Florida. So you just can't let a property decay. You know, a lot of Florida laws are gonna be kicking in in 2025. And once the building is 30 years old or older, three stories tall, it needs to go through a milestone inspection to make sure the building is structurally safe. Now in Florida, if you're within three miles of that coastline, you must have that property inspected every 25 years. So Florida condo buyers should reveal what these inspections are all about because they can be costly. And if there's deferred maintenance, I mean, ugh, as a buyer, you should know what you're really getting into. But as a buyer of Florida condo in 2025, you are entitled to that milestone inspection. And you wanna get this before you enter into the contract, as well as the structural integrity reserve study. And that is the money that's held in reserves for future repairs and replacement costs for the community. And this gives buyers more knowledge of the health of the complex and if anything, what needs to be addressed because this could cost a lot more than what most people expect. Some owners are gonna to have to sell because of these increased costs to keep the buildings up. But I'm sure you wanna know where you can afford to live, not just today, but well into the future because the future increases are coming. Number one, the diamond in the rough. Look, it is possible to get a good deal, even today. One time I bought a condo and it had pending litigation. Now, normally you say, oh my gosh, stay away from that, right? But I dove deeper into it and I found out that the pending litigation was against the developer 
and it was only a couple years old and they were getting towards the end of that lawsuit. Well, guess what? That money, I bought that condo and that money all went into the association. They replaced roofs and air conditioners and did pools and did all that work that needed to be done. But I ended up with a condo that was underpriced and also uh, the homeowners association had dropped every single month for 18 months because they had this flush cash in the cash reserves and it stayed low for a year. So the moral to the story is you can get a good deal if you do your research and you know what to look for. Now some condo owners are about to get completely wiped out yet at the very same time depending on your state, your location, the complex, other condo owners will safely navigate through this storm. Now you can still find that hidden gem, but knowing where to find these, what to look for, what to stay away from, it's super important. Wouldn't you agree with that? So wherever you are in the nation, whether it's the coastal Carolina area or Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where I am today, or anywhere in the United States, I have a network of real estate experts that I can hook you up with, and they will help you find your hidden gem and also avoid these pitfalls that are costly. So pick up the phone, give us a call at 843-839-9870. I hope you're enjoying these videos because I'm making them for you. Go ahead and comment below. Let me know if you enjoyed this, if it was helpful in any way, or if you're subscribed, guess what? I'll see you in the next video.